Hi, my name is Sarah and welcome back to Freshly Read Books. So it has been not too long since I last sat down here and discussed this and two things have happened since that first video. One, I learned how to pronounce Frederick Bachman's name correctly. Fun. And two, he released a new book. So both two very exciting things. You know, he had a win, I had a win. And I wanted to not only talk about this book, but I have a few other things that I want to talk about as it pertains to Frederick Bachman since the last video I did. Uh, it had been a while since I had read one of his books when I did that video. And while I did refresh myself a little bit, I think there is something a little bit different about like just completely reading a book by that author than there is just like picking up quotes here and there uh, and remembering kind of what my favorite parts were. But then reading another of his books reminded me more of his writing style. So there's more that I kind of want to talk about as it pertains to him as a whole. Also, of course, I want to talk about Anxious People, his latest book. And I want to update my ranking that I had from my initial video. But if you want a rundown of all of the other books that he has published up until this point, I talk about all of those in my first video. So this is kind of just going to be like adding in a few things here and there and then talking about Anxious People and where I think it fits in my own very biased ranking of his books. <laughs> I attended this like virtual event that was put on by a bookstore, Midtown Bookstore, I think it's called. So they had both Frederick Bachman and Ruth Ware, uh, who is the author of A Woman in Cabin 10, The Death of Mrs. Westray, The Turn of the Key. Let's see if I can do them all. <laughs> the Lion Game in a Dark Dark Wood. Boom. And then most recently, One by One. That's her new book that just came out. I'm super excited for it. So anyways, I went to this event virtually and I got to see, you know, a bit of an interview with those two authors. So I got to learn a little bit more about Frederick Backman, a, fun, a few little fun facts that I didn't really know. So I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things he said there. It also gave me some insight for Anxious People. So before we get into Anxious People, um, let's talk a bit about Frederick Backman. Nope. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about Frederick Bachman. So during the interview, I like took down a few notes of some things where I was like, oh, that makes sense, or that's cool to know, things like that about Frederick Bachman. And he talks about um, how he really likes mess. He likes annoying people, not like he likes to annoy people, but he likes people that are annoying. <laughs> and like the troublemakers, I think that that's very apparent throughout all of his books. I mean, his first fiction novel is about Uva and he's just about as annoying as it gets, right? <laughs> I mean, obviously you grow to love Uva through the story, that's the whole point, but like he is an annoying character. And so are a lot of the other characters. They all kind of just like annoy each other in different ways, even though there's like the building of relationships. It's still like between people that annoy each other and everything. And I think that throughout his other stories, it's very similar, like Britt Marie from Britt Marie was here. She's also a very annoying person. I really like that he is able to do that. He's able to take like these very annoying characters and by the end of it, you really like feel for them. That is something that he is very good at. In fact, a lot of his stories I've entered into thinking like there's no way you could get me to like that person that person's a jerk <laughs> and by the end of it sure enough and i would say that there it's very rare in a frederick bachman book that at the end of it you don't at least understand the motivations for every character um and i think anxious people i'm not getting into it yet but i think that this is the one that does that to the greatest extent or where that's like the clearest uh, but maybe it's just because it's the most recent one I've read by him, who knows. He also likes confined places that gives him the ability to dive deeper into characters. This is one of the things I talked about in my initial video where at the beginning of him writing with talking about Uva and everything, it's really focused on one character and then that's at like the center of the universe for the book and then there's more characters that are kind of in it, but it's not really a confined space. It does stay in this like little community, but it's, it's not really confined in the way that his future books end up feeling. Same with uh, Brit Marie, it's in a small town. And so I think with Brit Marie, that's when you really start getting like the more of the confined space, but even still there's a little bit of extra. And then Bear Town, it's confined to the small town and you feel like you understand the bounds of the entire space. And I think that that's where Frederick Bachman ends up going. So the later 
of a book that you read by him, the more I think you understand the space in which the characters exist. And it's not just that there's characters in a confined space, it's that there are characters and you understand their their space, that space that they exist in, and that is never more present than in anxious people. It just seems to like continually go in that direction. So the synopsis for anxious people is that we've got a group of people that are attending this open house and there's a bank robbery that's happening, I think across the street, but then it turns into like this hostage situation where the bank robber is in the apartment building and it's it's all of a sudden like this this hostage situ- and it's all of a sudden this hostage situ- <laughs> and it's all of a sudden this hostage situ- oh my gosh i can't say hostage situation hostage situation and then it's all of a sudden this hostage situation oh my gosh <laughs> okay you know what good enough so you get to understand the confines of the apartment pretty well throughout the book now it doesn't just take place in the apartment because the book picks up after the story uh, and then you hear about what happened during the hostage situation nailed it so it's told in the present and it's about the, the situation that happened in the past I don't know why that was so hard for me to <laughs> to say. So it's not just in the apartment, it's also like in the police station, interviews like that. Sorry, just saw like a little stretch of some legs happening in the background. Very cute. So yeah, you meet all of these people <laughs> and they're all annoying in their own right. And as the story unfolds, you start to understand more and more their motivations, what has made them into the people that they are, and how they work in their current lives. So it's it's a very Bachman book. It feels like he continues to narrow in on his like niche of writing and that every book is as close as he's ever gotten like to that. And this is like no exception. So if you like Bachman, you're going to like anxious people. Like for sure. I can I can say that hands down. If you don't, you can hold me personally responsible for that, which doesn't really mean anything, but you know, you can do it if you want. So I also found it interesting that this book uh, was originally called Open House. That was the working title. And then it was later changed to Anxious People because apparently nobody liked the title Open House. But I do think that I prefer the title anxious people one because open house because it is a hostage situation and it's very much not an open house like in the term like open because they're stuck there they're trapped so it's more of like a closed house like, i didn't even mean that as a terrible joke even though that is the way that that came out i meant it as a serious remark but like my bad but i do think that like having it called open house when it's about like people trapped is a little weird. I like the title Anxious People because this book does touch quite a bit on anxiety and mental health. And that's something that Bachman has been pretty open about, especially recently. So I think that, that this was a better direction to go in, especially because like I entered into this book thinking, oh, they're anxious because they're in a hostage situation. Like anxious is in the more toned down definition of the word, not anxious is in like having anxiety. But then as you go through it more and you learn about these people's problems and their lives, then you realize that there is like this deeper meaning tied up into this. So I think that this really is a fantastic title for the book. Some other notes that I really liked about this book, but I think are kind of things that are present throughout the other books that he's written is that Bachman writes really like satisfying books and I don't really know a better way to put it than that but like there's something about when you start reading one of his books and it's a bit off-putting almost at first it seems like a it's a very different writing style than I'm used to I can't think of another author that writes quite like this they're very quotable like the amount of lines and like areas that you could draw quotes from like i could just flip open to a page here i'm gonna do it i'm gonna flip over into a random page and i'm gonna find a good quote something like that you could see like on some picture or something i hope this works okay i also want to make sure i don't spoil anything i already found one but it's a spoiler <laughs> okay <laughs> I found one that <laughs> that works. Um, I'm trying to think of where to start it. Okay, 
Some people accept that they will never be free of their anxiety. They just learn to carry it. She tried to be one of them. She told herself that was why you should always be nice to other people, even idiots, because you never know how heavy their burden is. Boom. Frederick Bachman. Just put a little hyphen, Frederick Bachman. Boom. Quote. But also, the characters feel like caricatures throughout the book. And I think that that kind of ends up benefiting him in the end. He said something during the interview where he talked about how it takes like several real life people in order for him to make like one of his book characters. Like it takes just a little bit from a lot of different people to make one. And I think that that really makes sense. And that's what makes them seem so much like caricatures because it's not really like one realistic person, but like, it feels kind of like a mesh of a bunch of like different things and, and they all like fit together of course, but sometimes it just takes the character like so far beyond a person that you would meet like with those character traits. Like for example, the bank teller, I don't know what her position is at the bank, but she's the one that the like bank robber talks to first and she's very much like the stereotypical millennial and it's like her character is just like taken to this extreme version of a, of a millennial and would each of the each of her little quirks exist in other people yes would they all exist at once in another person maybe maybe a very specific kind of person but I think it would be rare to meet that kind of person. And when you have a whole book full of people that it feels like it'd be rare to meet somebody that has all of the traits that they have that are all pointing them in like one very specific personality direction, then that's when it starts feeling like, okay, these aren't real people, they're caricatures of people. But if you looked at any one of them, you could say like, well, maybe I would meet somebody like that in real life but all together it like it seems like so much and i think that that's present across all of frederick bachman's stories so he's able to walk like this line of like having these like real discussions about real feelings that people have very relatable feelings and like putting words to things that you wouldn't otherwise know how to put in words or using like the perfect analogy for something he's so good at it without making it sound like too preachy or something i i just think that all of his books have something for everybody however i could understand how his writing i do think that it could be off-putting to some people i would encourage anybody that hasn't read his books before if you're going to read one that make sure that you at least get halfway through the book because like i was saying earlier they are very satisfying but they start with like a very disorienting feeling because it's not written in ways that other books are written but then like as you read through it it just kind of like starts to fall together really nicely it's really like doing a puzzle and when you slowly start getting the full picture and then the end is always like so satisfying when like you have just a few pieces left and they're fitting just like perfectly where they belong and even though he touches on these like deeper themes like he talks about anxiety a lot in this book uh, and and other darker themes as well but it's done in such a way that it's like so readable it has like this nice feeling at the end of it like it had like the perfect amount of cookie or something do you know what i mean you're not like oh i really want another cookie but you're not like oh i had too many cookies it's like you had the perfect amount and i'll just go ahead and leave the analogies to frederick bachman he is far better at them than i am <laughs> okay so with all that being said let's see where anxious people falls in my lineup of favorite frederick bachman novels. So once again, this is very biased ranking. This is my own opinion. This is not taking anything like into account besides my personal feelings about the book. Okay, I actually have to look up my original list. I forgot that I ranked some on the same level. Why would I do that? <laughs> it's so annoying. Okay, my original ranking was Beartown and Us Against You sharing the top spot because I couldn't choose between the two of them, mostly because I can't remember what's in one book versus the other. I'm gonna have to reread those to see which one I actually like more than the other. It's just not something I was thinking about when I was reading them. I'm sure that I'll reread them for when he writes the next book in that series. But Bear Town and Us Against You was at the top of my list, then A Man Called Uva, then Brit Marie was here, and, and Every Morning the Way Home Gets Longer and Longer. I had them on the same line for reasons. 
Uh, and then <laughs> the deal of a lifetime. And my grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry. Uh, first of all, I'm annoyed at myself for the Brit Marie and the walk home being on the same thing. But I, I know why. It's because I really, I really liked both of them and I really didn't like the idea of either of them being in the fourth spot. Technically the fifth if you count both Bear Town and Us Against You. I feel like I should sort that out, right? I think I prefer Brit Marie was here. Just because I think that there is something about like a book of his, like the, the full novel, having that satisfaction of everything falling together. And you get a little bit of that when you read one of the novellas, which The Way Home uh, is one of his novellas. So it's like 90 pages. And I think there's like illustrations in it as well, if I remember correctly. Uh, so it went by like so quickly that I don't think you could get as much of the satisfying feeling. And also I really loved the town that Brit Marie was set in. So I'm gonna go with Brit Marie being slightly higher. Um, and then I feel better about that. <laughs> and eventually we'll, fit, we'll sort out the Bear Town and the Us Against You situation maybe when the third book in that series comes out. As for Anxious People, I've been switching back and forth um, between it being top or it being under Bear Town and Us Against You. I think it, it's a close call, but for now at least, I'm going to put it under Bear Town and Us Against You. Maybe when I reread them, then that will change or I'll just at least be refreshed in how I feel about those books. Maybe one of them will be below Anxious People and the other one will be above it. Who knows? But yeah, for now, this is my is my ranking of all of Frederick Bachman's books. So yeah, that's the update on Frederick Bachman. Please do let me know what your ranking of the books that you've read by him would be. What would be your favorite? I'm very curious. I love hearing that from other people. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing. Other than that, I will see you in the next one. Bye.